Hey family, I'm Pastor Torre. Welcome to One YouTube channel. You're getting ready to hear a phenomenal message. It's going to bless you. I have a couple of quick announcements really quickly. First of all, if you're not subscribed to this channel, go ahead and click the subscribe button so that you'll be notified anytime we go live, anytime we've got something that's going to bless you. Number two, if you want to support our ministry, we do great things as you're going to experience, but we also do great practical things and we can certainly uh, use your support. The instructions are on the screen if you want to give. And last but not least, my new book, Balance, is available for pre-order now. It is a game-changing, life-changing book. You can go to thebalancebook.com and get it, and there's certain things that you will have access to just by pre-ordering. So go to the website. All the information is there. Now let's get into this powerful, amazing word. God bless you. God bless you, family. Happy Sunday to you. And today we're going to have a lot of of fun. We were praying about it, and because we know that Valentine's Day is tomorrow, and um, and many people are under the theme of love, we decided to do something special. And I've got a special guest with me today, Pastor Sarah. Come on, somebody. <laughs> we're gonna. Will you be my Valentine? Let's just go and cut to the you chase. You know, I'm married. What? And I'm happily married. So why you always hit my line then? Uh, I'm still struggling. You know, I still. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't make me kill you right here in front of everybody. <laughs> okay, all right, all right. I'll be your Valentine. Okay. Will you be mine? That's the I question. Will. Born your Valentine. We'll be. E mm. Mm. You see what I did there? I'll cut this camera Speak off game, right ladies. now. I'll cut this camera Speak off game. right now. <laughs> in fact, you got, you got to you make it a thing to spit game. What? Most people don't know this. That's most people don't, let me tell you. Most people what? don't know this. What? But she pushed up on me strong to start this whole that thing. That is not okay. Do, was, is this what we're doing in twenty twenty two? That is not what happened. Babe. Okay. So he was interrupting me in church, a pastor, imagine that, interrupting me while we were at a service, and I just gave him an opportunity that he was obviously fishing for, and, and it turned out to be very beneficial for him. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. You know, the funny thing is, if she wouldn't have stepped up, um, God would have had to have gone a different route, because that just kind of wasn't my thing. I just was uh, not timid, because I ain't never been timid, but... Um, I just wouldn't have done it. So thank you. You know, I, I thank you oh, for gosh. stepping to me. I, I really do. I wasn't thank you for being so aggressive. Bucket, though. It's not like I hit you. You know what I mean? Like I knew that when I shot my shot that it was going to go. You know Ooh. what I mean? I'm not trying to say I'm LeBron in these streets, but I knew when I put that thing in the air, it was nothing but net. How'd you, you know? Because you, you know? was wide open, baby. <laughs> you was wide oh, open. Oh, so I was the thirst bucket. <laughs> you know Let's stay focused. Okay. Let's stay focused. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> Well, listen, today is going to be a lot of fun. We're going to be talking about love and balance. Yeah. And of course, you know, we're passionate about both themes. As you know, I've got a book coming out in April called Balance. Pastor Sarah wrote the foreword. And it's just an incredible work. And we're excited about bringing balance and equilibrium to the world because the truth of the matter is, man, we, we just got off course. And I just believe that, that what God gave us to put into this book is gonna help so many people. So those are the biggest themes that are in our universe right now. Love, of course, is Valentine's Day, and then balance. So we're gonna have a lot of fun. We've got questions. Some of you sent in your questions, so we're gonna to try to get to as many questions as we can, but we wanna just begin our conversation about love and balance. And when we were kinda of just, you know, just talking in bed the other night, we realize that there is a connection between love, balance, and imbalance, wouldn't you say? Yeah, there should be a connection between love and balance, but I really feel like that when a person first falls in love, that it does create imbalance. Mm -hmm. Love has a takeover spirit, which is why I think so many people are afraid of it, afraid of having children, afraid of truly investing in a relationship, because people don't want to lose themselves mm -hmm. in the concept of love. Yeah, it, it is overwhelming. You're right. I love it. You call it a takeover spirit mm -hmm. because you, you do. It's like when we think back on like when we first fell in love and, you know, we both were busy and doing our thing. But like the only thing that mattered for sure was was love. Yeah. And um, and so love kind of threw us out of balance. It was imbalanced because it was because it was so new. Yeah. And because it was so exciting and because it was so exhilarating 
it became our whole life. And, you know, even our children, to a certain degree, we love our kids, but even they kind of like took <laughs> they, tell, they tell horror stories <laughs> about us first dating and us being newlyweds and how we would go out to dinner and forget to feed them. But that's not true. <laughs> right. That's there not was cereal altogether. in the house. There was cereal. You know I mean? Hot dog, Frank. Yes, for sure. Bologna. Come on. Yeah, we just weren't taking them with we us. We weren't taking and them. And look at them. They're still living. Yeah. But, but, but you, you, you're right. Love in the beginning. Yeah. Throws you out of balance. Yeah. Uh, everything is all one-sided. All you're concerned about is this. Uh, and then there's certain things that happen. I mean, we were talking about, you know, sometimes you pick up a few extra love pounds. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. That mm. happy that happy way. <laughs> you know what I'm weight. talking about? Where you just all of a sudden y'all just you love each other so much and you were working out to get <laughs> to get yourself ready for the person. Yes, yes. But but then you start, you know, you, you start slipping in certain areas time management oh, goes yeah. out the window and other things and so isn't it funny we're looking for love but sometimes love is the very thing that that can knock us off our square yeah i think love feels so delicate in the beginning stages mm. that it does require so much attention or at least the perception of so much attention because it feels like at any moment it could fall apart like mm. are you still interested do wow. you still adore me am i still showing up in this moment as someone who you desire to be with and i think that that's why it requires all of the attention that it receives mm. i was thinking it's almost like it breaks your heart open when you fall in love mm. in this incredible, beautiful way. But just like a broken bone, it changes the way you walk. It changes mm. the way you show up. And eventually you have to learn to live in that space of love. And it can mm. be challenging. I think that that's what makes or breaks like the honeymoon stage or the puppy love stage mm. into something that is actually foundational in mm -hmm. your identity. Is can we survive when we have to swing the pendulum mm. at least in the middle and begin to incorporate love? into our lives because we can't we can't really live there you know I, I have a you know I have great friends and people that say you know the honeymoon don't won't last forever and you know and I fight against that because I think that we we have we do have honeymoon moments I mean we got moments where it's just like okay we're married and we're gonna do our thing and everything but but I think for the most part every day I wake up in a honeymoon and in a dream to a certain degree. But I do think that it is kind of a fallacy or maybe um, a, a false expectation to just believe that you can survive, that a relationship can survive in this, all I'm concerned about is love or all I'm concerned about is this relationship. Some of the fears of, you know, is this too good to be true? I think you yeah. mentioned that. And so you're trying to hold and this is the most, I want to keep it uh, and, and you're thrown out of balance. I think that, that the honeymoon season kind of does shift when now in order for the marriage to be sustained, it has to swing, the pendulum has to swing back to balance. And this is where the rubber meets the road because if we only work when we're being irresponsibly in love, wow. right? When if when we're all we're doing is thinking about love, we're sowing here. But if we're honest, we're not taking care of this over here. Yeah. You know, we're not taking care of, you know, some of our responsibilities or our priorities, our kids, <laughs> you know, whatever it might be. Does this love still work when I now incorporate it into all of my other priorities? Yeah. And that's where the honeymoon could technically end and where the rubber beats the road. You know, it reminds me, I used to, people used to say this all the time in church so much so that I thought it was a scripture, but don't be so heavenly minded that you aren't mm. any earthly good. Mm. And it makes me think about how people who first fall in love with Jesus and they're just like quoting scriptures, blessed and highly favored anytime you ask them how they're doing. At the end of, now you know those people. <laughs> <laughs> but at the end of the day, our relationship with God still has to transcend into our everyday life just like love does. And I think that that idea of like, how do I get this to show up in a way that honors my relationship with God or honors this love, honors this relationship, but also gives me room to be who I need to be in order to grow? Because I do feel if we do not find balance in love, then we're going to find resentment where there was mm -hmm. once love because I can't be myself any longer in order to make this work. Absolutely. And you said be, be myself. Uh, there's a chapter in balance, I'm going to say this about most of the chapters. It's one of my favorite chapters in the book, yeah. uh, but the chapter is called "There Is No Team in I," and it's no a, I in team. No, 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 no. That's the yeah. That's the thing. You no. better. 
no team and I. Mm -hmm. Because as you know, the, the phrase, the most popular phrase is yeah. there's no I in team. It's, you know, you can't be about I or self in order for or in order to make the team successful yeah. and i flipped that and mm -hmm. i said there's no team and i and it's not to negate the fact that you have to have a team mentality if you're in a team in order to win i get that but oftentimes if if self isn't tended to then you actually do a disservice to the team or the marriage or the partnership the relationship because you're not bringing your best mm -hmm to the equation. And it's funny, in that chapter, I kind of talk about, you know, me and motorcycles, me, you and motorcycles. And <laughs> this is a funny story. Me, me and Sarah, we're in Dallas and we saw this couple and they were riding motorcycles. They had two Harleys. And, 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 and did she have an Afro? No, I think it wasn't we Afro. envisioned that. Yeah. We envisioned that. But you know, after something. the story gets long, <laughs> it, it felt like she had this big old yes. beautiful Afro. Mm -mm. And it just seemed like it was just blowing in the wind in the on the motorcycle. Realm. It was an Afro. She didn't have no Afro? Realm. Mm -mm. I think she had an Afro. I don't, a beautiful Afro. I don't, okay. She was then yes. But I think it was in the spirit realm. In the spirit realm? Mm -hmm. But they looked so cool. You remember that scene, I baby? I do. I do. No, they were dope. They oh, were dope. My First of all, you don't see a lot of black couples in the motorcycle community from what I have have been exposed True. to. True. So to see this couple out on a Saturday and they were just giving it to us. Like they fooled the leather, the chaps, the black, the Harley, and they was cruising. It was beautiful. It was. And so we said, hey, that's we, us. We're going to learn how to ride these motorcycles <laughs> and we're going to do that. At right? Some Remember point, that? Why can't you just celebrate other people? Now we got to step into no, it. That's, no, 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 no. <laughs> that's us. We got this. Oh, we were next. Oh, yeah. And so we talked about it for DM. a while. We talked mm -hmm. about it for a while. And uh, and I went and kind of went and I went and bought a motorcycle. You know, I'm like, come on, babe, let's do this. And I was like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> you were serious. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I get the motorcycle. You know, I'm, I'm trying to get her into it. Um, and she was a little reluctant, you know, whatever. And so, uh, you well, looking like you want to say something. No, I, no, you were reluctant, speak though, right? Speak your truth. Speak but you were reluctant, yeah? Um, <laughs> I, I was reluctant. I was. What was most, uh, the greatest part of my reluctancy had to do with the fact that the motorcycle classes started at 6 o'clock in the morning. Okay, okay. And and I felt this, that didn't, mm -mm. Okay. I couldn't okay. do that. So you have to take motorcycle classes, get your motorcycle license, and you need to take the classes because you don't take the classes. The last thing you want to do is be on the motorcycle and not know how to ride a motorcycle and fall down on the motorcycle. That's not, that, that's not Jesus. So I start riding. And at first I'm like, babe, I'm going for a ride, you know, come out with me. And she would come out with me, you know, and then... You know, it just seemed to me that she was like less and less and less excited about riding this motorcycle. I felt like she was only doing it because I asked her to do it. And um, and so I would go out by myself and I would start feeling guilty. Like, man, we had this vision about us doing it together and I'm having a blast. I'm, <laughs> I'm on PCH, you know what I mean? I got my gear. I'm looking like a straight dork. I realize now that true bikers don't wear all the Harley gear. You don't do that. That's when you tell the whole world that you're not really a biker because you're trying to be a biker. And I had Harley Davidson everything. Harley Davidson over here. Harley Davidson down my leg. I mean, it was just stupid. It was just bad or whatever. And uh, I was into it and I started riding. But what was crazy is I started feeling guilty. Even though I was having a good time, it was soul cleansing. Um, you know, when I came back, I was a better man. I had more patience and everything. I felt like because we weren't doing it together, somehow I was cheating and violating the relationship when really it was the other way around. Uh, because who, even though she is not into it the way that I'm into it, the reality of it is that when I go out, when I take time to myself, it became Torre time. And I take time to myself and I get on the bike, I come home, I'm better, I'm more patient. Honey, have you ever like, do you struggle like me with feeling guilty for needing a little bit of time to yourself or, or you know what I'm trying to say? For sure, as, as a parent, as a wife, we are taught 
you know, to really, I think anyway, put our families first, make sure we're taking care of them and that we're serving them. And, you know, there's conscious parenting and I'm in therapy and I want to make sure that I'm bringing my best to you in our relationship. And yet the truth is that there are moments where I feel like I'm so busy pouring out for everyone else that I don't have anything that restores me, Mm -hmm. which is why I loved motorcycling for you because you don't really do anything for fun. Mm -hmm. Like I enjoy cooking. It's nothing for me to sit outside for hours with the book like you didn't have an outlet and so when you went motorcycling and came back like I loved who you were Mm. when you came back from having that time and yet I've had to really encourage myself to advocate for when I need time and to say I need help and to say like I want to take the weekend and, and go to a hotel and just sleep for a few days and it's hard though because I feel like I'm letting you all down when I do that yeah is it that that, that right there, what you just said, there, there is this idea that I think that everybody struggles with, particularly parents, if you're in a relationship, and sometimes even your commitment to your organization is to say that if I throw up my hand and say, hey, I, I need a break for me, has nothing to do with you, has nothing to do with, I, I'm not running away from you, I'm not running away from the kids, I'm not even running away from work. But the reality of it is in order for me to be balanced so that I can produce my best, I need this. But there is this, I'm going to call it what it is. There's this lie that we tell ourselves that says that if I take care of me, I am damaging, violating, or being disloyal to you. And I think that that is something that we have to confront. Uh, Because if we don't, to your earlier point, we're going to end up bitter. We're going to miss things. We're going to have resentment. And um, I don't know, it's just an important conversation. I was just thinking about this the other day because I was looking at all of my responsibilities and projects and deadlines and working out and taking care of the kids and breakfast, all this stuff. And I was thinking to myself, well, maybe if you're waking up at five o'clock to work out instead of working out, you can catch up on your emails. And I was like, that's your problem right Mm. now, right there, is that you would rather disappoint yourself Mm -hmm. than to disappoint someone else. Mm -hmm. And that's how you know you have a people pleasing mentality because Mm -hmm. you would rather let yourself down and let yourself go as opposed to letting someone else down. But then who you show up to do that work as someone who's disappointed because they betrayed themselves is a disservice to the work and their relationships Mm -hmm. that you're serving. And so Mm. I've had to really tell myself that the habit and practice of allowing yourself to be the first one to go, Mm. the first one voted off the island, the first one who can handle the disappointment and the heartbreak at the expense of not showing up for what you need Mm -hmm. is a habit that I have to break. That's powerful. In Balance, there's a chapter called The Power of No. This, If you didn't get the book for anything other than this chapter, The Power of No, it would be worth the entire book. But in that chapter, I, I start talking about false loyalty. Mm. And, and what false loyalty is, is when under the, the, um, the guise of being loyal to somebody, you are disloyal to yourself. I I am a firm, let me tell you something, I'm big on loyalty, I believe in loyalty, if I even get a whiff of someone not being loyal, I'm done with them, but loyalty has limits, and I think that the limit of loyalty is when you take loyalty to someone else so far that you forsake or ultimately are disloyal to yourself, and here is the truth, I I love no, because what no does is no qualifies your relationships. Mm. Because some relationships, we are only, they only work because you never say no. They only work because the relationship is based on your yes all the time. And so so sometimes you need to throw a no out there just to qualify whether or not that relationship is worth you. I'm learning that even in our relationship with our kids, to be honest, Mm. because sometimes I feel like the only way that they're able to continue to ask me for things that feel unreasonable or that I don't have the energy to give is because I never say no. Mm. And I'm afraid sometimes as a parent is that I'm going to end up snapping on them because they don't know how (laughs) expensive the yes I give them Uh. is. And so I've learned to communicate like Mackenzie wanted me to watch something with her. And I was in the middle of cooking dinner like it's 615. It is prime. Everyone's about to be hungry. 
hungry time and she's trying to show me something on YouTube. And instead of snapping and being like, don't you see that I don't have time? I'm busy mm. right now. I'm like, Mackenzie, I want to give that my undivided attention. And right now I'm cooking and so I'm not going to be able to watch it. So explaining to her and giving her context of like what all goes into me saying yes and why I can't say yes in this moment. Because outside of just romantic love, our sense of obligation to the people we love in general will have us dividing ourselves and then being frustrated that they didn't see how we have fallen into pieces. So what you're saying is we train people Come on, on, on how to violate our boundaries. Mm. It's one thing for someone to attempt to violate our boundary and we say no, right? Yeah. That powerful word called no. But you're saying by saying yes all the time, we are actually not only empowering them, but encouraging them to step across our boundaries. Yeah, because it's not really yes, it's like sure. You know what I mean? Mm. It's an attitude. Like it's a yes, but it's not a full yes. And I would rather have a strong no than a resentful sure mm. or a resentful yes. Because at the end of the day, at least I know where your limits are. And it, can I say something to us mm. strong friends, to us got to be there for everybody, people? Like I want you to understand that part of the reason why we often feel like we don't have an outlet, why we feel like we have no one to talk to is because we are constantly showing up in that yes instead of saying I don't have capacity to do that right wow. now I wish I had the emotional energy but I'm just not able to hear that I'm going to pray for you maybe there's someone you can talk to maybe you should consider therapy I'm not trying to even walk you through this mm. but we've got to start putting up barriers because we can't continue to be everything for everyone and nothing to ourselves babe that's that's so powerful and we're so guilty because we we are strong we're high capacity individuals, we're high capacity leaders, but high capacity is not unlimited capacity. Exactly. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And um, I, I think what you said is so powerful. And you're right. We have to teach people that we are, we have to, we have to teach people, I want to say this right, we have to show our humanity. Yeah. We, yeah. we, have, we have to teach people that Although, you know, every time you see us, we're giving, you ain't seeing us all the time. Yeah. You're only seeing us in curated moments of power. Yeah. Right? So we're here, we're talking right now. Feels like we got some answers. It feels like we got it all together. But, but this is 45 minutes on the stage. Yeah. We have to spend 23 more hours, 23 hours and 15 more minutes of this day being who we are. And so I think that being honest, being open, being transparent, even like sometimes... If I don't return a text or if I don't return an email or or if I, I can't get to my DMs, sometimes it is straight out because I don't have the capacity to like you only have like a certain amount of energy assigned to you. And uh, and a good person has to budget it and spend it wise. I think that's a brilliant point. You know what I was thinking when you were saying about teaching people about your boundaries mm -hmm. is in a relationship, you often have to re-enroll someone into a class because wow. where my boundaries <laughs> were when we first met versus where they are now that we have children or that I have this new job or I've yeah. moved into this new city has changed. And sometimes someone is in a relationship with a version of you that no longer exists. Exists. Mm -hmm. And it is our responsibility not to say you don't get me, but to say, okay, it's time for us to re-enroll in the classroom of me and for me to re-enroll in the classroom of you so that I can understand how do I support you now? What are your boundaries now? Who are you? What makes you happy? What makes you tired? And like you mm -hmm. asked me on our first date, how can I serve you? If we're not constantly, first of all, that takes a lot of energy to be in a relationship with someone where you're saying, I constantly want to enroll in the classroom of you takes a lot of energy. Mm -hmm. And I think maybe we'll make wiser relationship decisions if we realize that we're signing up to be in school with someone for the next hundred years of our lives. That's so true. But you know what that requires? And I think this is where, where a lot of people fall off. It requires not only self-awareness, it requires self-awareness and it requires soul awareness. Mm. You know, because you have to be self-aware enough to know that you have changed. Wow. So most people, a lot of people, oftentimes they change, but they, they're not connected with themselves enough to really not just know that they have changed, but dig into their soul enough to know what that change is and what that change means. And, um, and even, you know, again, back to balance, because we talked about love and balance. You know, I talk about soul awareness, you know, because your soul knows what it needs, but the problem is there's so much noise. Yeah. 
there's so much noise around us that we can't even listen to our soul because like our soul is honest. Mm -hmm. Like it is the most honest part of who we are. And, uh, and then because of all the noise that's around us, that noise distorts the voice of our soul. Yeah. Our soul will tell you what you need. It will tell you, your soul will tell you when you need to take two days and go out to Newport Beach or, or go to Mexico or go down to anywhere. You get out the house, or take a walk, go to the mall or whatever. Your soul knows what you need, but you have to, we're not in relationship with ourselves. And oftentimes we're not even in relationship with our souls. And so we can't even articulate and communicate to that person that, that loves us and wants the best for us. The person that we're in relationship with, we can't even articulate to them what we need or that we've changed mm. because we haven't taken time to process the changes that have taken place within us. I'm just thinking about the people who are punks like me and are thinking <laughs> to themselves, like, how do I communicate it without sounding needy or sounding mm. weak and there is vulnerability connected to it so yes you have to do this soul work mm. and that within itself mm. is worth a journey of balance and wholeness and to wholeness. get to a get place both. <laughs> where you can do that but once you do it to have the vulnerability to say to your partner i'm in need my mental health is yeah, in trouble yeah, yeah. i'm on the brink of depression or anxiety and i need this mm. because sometimes we'll say we'll need it but we're gonna say it with an attitude <laughs> do you see how much i do around this house of course i need a break yeah. and that can make another person very defensive but to come from a place of vulnerability because you've done the work to honor your soul mm. and to be able to say i know i'm holding it together but i haven't gotten over the grief i know i'm holding it together mm. but it really did get to me when this happened and i need a minute to sort through myself um, that takes vulnerability that a lot of times we're not willing to pay but can help us navigate relationships where we have to have their support in order to get away because a lot of us can't just get up and get away without having someone mm. sign a permission slip saying I'll hold it down while you're gone this is really big and we're not just talking about something that we read in the book no child. this is the reality of of our lives I can recall a time <laughs> you remember we were living in Encino I remember where we were and everything, and and we both. I think we were maybe a year into the marriage, maybe. Mm -mm, you know the moment I'm talking about. I think so. And yeah. uh, and um, and it was like we we needed to say something to each other, one to another. But we're both. We were both at the time so proud and so like, no, I got mine. You got yours. We don't need the, you know. And what we needed to tell each other in that moment were these three words: I need you, oh. and. But it, it, I could almost. Ugh. Mind you, we're married. We're okay? married. We didn't right? made, I didn't move from Texas. We blend in our families together, and it just, it just didn't. Babe, mm -mm, I didn't it like was it. The, it was terrible. <laughs> like it, it was like because all of the conversation was leading us to the desperate need to be vulnerable enough to Gross. with each other to say these three words that we both were overwhelmingly feeling, but felt like we would be punished. Punks. <laughs> we would be weak. I need you. Well, you know what it is like. We want to fall in love, but we don't want to need someone. Ah, there it is. You know what I mean? Like I love you, but I don't need you. I don't need you. Okay, I got yeah. my own money. My I own take money. care of myself. Oh, I make good decisions. Yeah. If I don't make good decisions, I pick up the consequences. Our culture doesn't really feed us that there is this threshold between loving someone into building a life with them in which you do need yeah, them. Yeah. Like, I don't, you shouldn't be in a marriage where you don't need the other person. Ooh, because isn't, isn't marriage, in other words, the, the marriage is a partnership. Yeah. And in a partnership, you don't have, you think about, you even related to business, you don't have a business right. partnership where you don't need the partner's contribution. Exactly. The, the whole purpose of the partnership whether it's a joint venture, whatever it is, is because there's strengths that both people bring and this whole institution is based on this stronger thing yeah. that, that the two parties come together and produce. So it is like... It's foolish, and marriage is an institution. It's a partnership. Yeah. So for me to come to marriage and say, I don't need, I don't you, need you, first of all, it's a lie. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe when I was single, I didn't need you, but now that we have this new thing, 
We need each other. And I mean, that's why you have to be whole when you get married, right? Mm -hmm. You need to be confident in yourself and you need to know what you bring to the table. Like all of those things are true, but you want the fullest version of you yeah. so that when you become one with someone, you have some pieces that you can afford to, I'm going to say lose. Mm. Because at the end of the day, there are some spaces where your partner's going to come in and lift that weight. Yeah. So you don't have to do that anymore. Yeah. But if you come in and you're already at a deficit and then this person wants more from you, of course you're oh. going to be frustrated, upset, and ready to quit because you didn't have anything to give in the first place. Mm. Two halves don't make a whole. I want to round out that story because when we finally Ugh. let it squeeze through our teeth. It was 4th of July weekend. I remember it. And you said it first because I don't think I would have had the... The, 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 <laughs> the what? The, the, the what? To say it first. Come on now. And you were like, and you said it in the softest way. And your eye, and you were being vulnerable, and your eyes, your beautiful brown eyes you watered. Better. Hey, gosh, Mac I bought that talk. Right here. Your beautiful <laughs> brown it. eyes watered. And you were like, I need you. And then I was like, I need you too. <laughs> An epiphany, six <laughs> months into marriage. <laughs> and it was, it was a breakthrough moment. That might have been the first major breakthrough of our marriage. Yeah. I think. There comes this moment after fighting and grieving and going through brokenness and heartbreak where you finally allow yourself to receive another person fully mm. in a way that changes you. And it felt good to have someone worthy of needing. Mm. Wow. And to be in a place where I could express it. Yeah. It, it um, We've had subsequent vulnerable moments from there. Oh, yeah. Um, the past two years were extremely challenging for me, as you know. I'm writing a book. I'm writing balance. I don't feel like the writing is my best. The world is changing. Um, everything that we're doing has changed. Yeah. Our tours come to a complete stop. Our outside speaking stops. We can't gather in person anymore. Um, there is uncertainty everywhere. None of us have ever had to live with the fear of, am I going to catch this and die? Are my children going to end up being orphans? Um, is something going to happen? Is the economy going to shift in such a way that we lose our home and all these sort of things? And and so we're walking around with that, and and I really feel like, man, I, I oh, 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 the other moment, the other moment. Um, uh, I, I'm, I'm digress. I need to stay on track. I need to stay on track. Um, but no, I, it, it was such a, it was a tough season, and I think, would you say that I, I kind of came clean with you about my struggles with having it together and and d did I become more transparent and vulnerable about you know just how heavy things were did I you were I know what you're about to say I, <laughs> go ahead allowed, tell on me tell am on I allowed me. to share that moment you are go ahead. okay so we are in the room and you're telling me about how stressed you are and um you know and we're in a pandemic and all of this stuff and I was like of course your mental health is being challenged you were like what what <laughs> mental, health. mental health don't Play with people's I'm mental health. You don't right just now. throw around Shit, mental health. I was like, sir, <laughs> come back, come back. You, your mental health is a part of your being. And I think that that was a moment in which you allowed yourself. I mean, I broke out the feelings wheel and everything. Like we. No, it was, first of all, it, don't tell me <laughs> that, that, don't even mention mental health because I don't know, there was this, even in my own mind, and I, and I encourage therapy, I, I go to therapy, you know, but there was something about, I had never looked at mental health as this neutral thing. Yeah. Because the term mental health literally is neutral, you know, but I think because there's such a stigma and, and sometimes even a fear. Yeah. You know, of of always of not being crazy. Let's just call it what it, what it is. Yeah. Not being a lunatic or whatever it is. Fear that I, could, I I I was so blocked that I didn't even realize 
that mental health is a neutral phrase. Yeah. The same way physical health. Yeah. <laughs> you she know, said mental health. It, it, oh, I started binding the devil. <laughs> and, no, depth me. and life is in the <laughs> power of the tongue. Take it back. Take it back. <laughs> Sir, what are you talking about? But but it was an <laughs> but it was a it was a breakthrough. And you were so calm. You were so calm and sweet with me. Well, you I, know. While I wrestled to, you know, but the reality of it is my mental health. In fact, not just mine, everybody's mental health was yeah. challenged during that time. But vulnerability, the fact that um, you could draw out <laughs> my vulnerability, I think was a powerful thing. And I, I think that the greatest growth, and we've had a number of power moments in our, in our marriage, and we have a, a really outstanding marriage. I like it. I mean, it's really... You know, listen, it's not without its realities, yeah. but but it's solid and, and I thank God for it. Yeah. But I think that some of the, for me, the major breakthrough moments in our marriage have centered around you being vulnerable, me being vulnerable, us being vulnerable together. Oh, yeah. And we're learning deeper levels of vulnerability. I think, you know, to talk about balance in a relationship I think part of the reason why relationships can get off balance or imbalanced is because I'm not sure how much of myself I can put on the scale. Like, I know you like this version of me, but if I add this childhood trauma, if I add this anger, if I add the fact that I say a thousand mean things before I get to how I actually feel onto the scale, can you handle that? And I think little by little, we've added different things onto the scale and been blown away that we can still stay balanced. And I think that that is the dance of marriages. I'm going to put something on the scale. I don't know how you're going to handle it. And then that person comes through and says, I can handle that. Give me more. And wow. we've been doing that for, for years now. We, we have been. And, and I think you get to a certain point where you no longer have to test mm. what you put on the scale. Yeah. Uh, you, you have put enough on the scale. Look, if, if that joker was going to be right. gone. Like if you can handle that, you got <laughs> right, this. Right. <laughs> if you don't know me by now, you yeah. know, uh, and, it, and it's, it's a beautiful thing. We better take a couple of questions oh, yeah, before we geez. get. So let's see. Um, how important is friendship and humor <laughs> And a spouse. I think that's a personal choice, right? <laughs> but you're that's crazy. True. Like, I mean, you're, and I mean that in the most loving way. Like, you have a real problem. If I put my wig down in front of you, it could end up on your head and you could just be walking <laughs> around. And I think that that's problematic. <laughs> no, it's true. I, I think that life, you know, again, to each his own, because some people are very stoic and sure. they're not moved by, mm -hmm. no by fun at humor. All. They said friendship and humor. I mm -hmm. think friendship. Oh, my gosh. That's not negotiable. You know, because I think in a relationship and spouse, you know, I talk about this all the time. I feel like a good marriage, a good relationship, a good partnership is like a house. Yeah. You know, and a house has many rooms. You've got the erotic room. You know, you've got the... The, the business partnership room. You've got the parenting room and you better have the friendship room because I think that the friendship room is like the living room. It should be the biggest, most utilized room in the house because you're not always going to feel you know, sexy, you know, I mean, most of the time you I will. think it's the kitchen. <laughs> can, do, which, can we call the, fr the friendship room the kitchen? Okay. Because I really do think that that feeds our ability to show up in all of the different spaces. Hmm. I like I that. I no, know. I like that. The kitchen. The kitchen, well, like, we got the kitchen, and it kind of extends over open into area. the... You yeah, better. so that, that one Right, that one boom, room. chakalaka. Yeah. All in there together. I love that. So it's very important. Uh, and again, the humor is... I think humor is good. The scripture says that laughter is good like medicine. Uh, and, I, and, I, and I life, for me personally, life is too crazy to not laugh. We be laughing. I no, said be. About we be <laughs> laughing. About stuff that's like, you should really be crying. But if you like, listen, at least we still here. Yeah. Um, okay, so what percentage of our relationship do you think is friendship? Mm. Oh, what percent? Oh, God. Easy. Okay, so well, let's talk about the, let's, the pie is friendship, um, Partnership. Friendship. Give me the pie. What are the Fr pies? <laughs> Friendship, parenting, parenting, romance. Oh, those three? Yeah. Friendship? Oh, friendship and parenting is in there. I'd say romance is, is we got parenting in there. I'd say friendship is at least 60%. I, I was going to say 70. You're going to say, I, I, that's almost at 70 at first. Up, yeah. You know, uh, 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 <laughs> you know what I mean? But um, yeah, so 70 and then uh. 
And then we just divide the other two by 15. Sure. Cool. You know what I mean? Because cool. they're yeah. our roommates. You know what I mean? We try yeah. to get them kids out the we, house. Oh, okay? we love them. We love, love them so them. much. Love them. Love them to death. Yeah. Love them to death. Love, love you. Ooh, a lot. Yeah, but, you know, also. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I, I, we got enough time to take. Let's take one more. Uh, some of these we already answered. How do you love yourself in a healthy way in order to show up for your spouse, family better? We said that. Uh, how do you keep... The spark alive. I, why did you pick that question? <laughs> what is wrong with you? Woo! Babe. Like, I mean, I mean, it's, it's kind of a lot to ask, but that's okay. It is a lot to ask. Um, well, let's talk principle. Let's talk principle. So um, I keep the spark alive by not assuming that what moved my wife yesterday moves her today. Um, I tried to study her, um, study her interests because she's evolving. I'm evolving. Our marriage is evolving. And so I'm watching what's moving her. And I try to kind of come and, and, and swim in that ocean with her. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I, I think because the spark, you talk about the spark, something is sparking your partner already, right? You just want to make sure that you are educated enough in your partner and what's making her spark to add your unique flavor to that so that she can have that double spark. <laughs> that makes sense? It did, no, because, it did. because something, and maybe this is not for everyone, but, but something is making you smile. Something is making you curious. Something is piquing your curiosity, rather. Mm -hmm. Something is intriguing you. Right. So you're you're sparked about something, listening to the dream, the passion. What are you excited about? And then like for you and maybe it's it's different for everyone, you know, knowing their love language, what moves and whatever. But I know for me, if I encourage you, inspire you or jump in the river of what you are currently excited about. It's coming right back to me. Mm -hmm. It's coming right back to me. Okay. That makes sense? Yes, it does. All right. Okay, so I think part of keeping the spark alive is, one, creating a space where you can connect with one another without distractions. Mm -hmm. Because I think that who we are when we're at the house with our roommates versus who we are on vacation are two completely That's different true. people. So creating an environment where you can look exclusively at your spouse mm -hmm. or partner Secondly, like, don't forget to gas your partner up. Mm. Like, they, you fine. Like, I see you, look at them traps coming up on you. You know what I mean? Like, look mm. at that collarbone. Like, you need to Come gas your partner. Yes, I yes, see you. Yes, yes. You need to gas your partner up. And secondly, like, just don't forget to, like, you know, get sexy. You yes, know what I mean? Yes. Like, make it sexy. Like, don't feel like, you know, everything has to be so boring. Like, every mm. now and then, turn up and let your partner know, like, it's not just for the gram. It can happen for you right Come now. On. Do you Come know what I'm on. saying? Like, I'm not just getting dressed up to go out. I'm getting dressed up to go in. Do you see what hey, I'm saying? Oh, oh. Mm -mm. Glory to God. <laughs> well, that's about all we have time for today. <laughs> no, it's, it's true. Yeah. And not to, take, not to take each other for granted, right? Not to live off of the high of the sparkiness of your first year or your first two or three years yeah. or whatever, but to say... That person's still in there. Yeah. That person that dug that, that's really that's really good. I read this book one time, maybe this is gonna help the ladies, um, but I read this book about a woman who was having a difficult time showing up and feeling sexy within her marriage, and it's because she had so many different responsibilities that in order to even channel herself to where she could be sparked, she had to connect with her womanhood first, yeah. which I think goes back to the no I and team, mm -hmm. because at the end of the day, if you are not connected with yourself and you don't know what moves you, you don't know what inspires you, you don't know what draws your attention, then you can't even tell your partner how to spark you up. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, sure, you want your partner to give you a spark, but you got to tell them where the yeah. ignition is. To understand Ooh, what I'm saying when there I said that? Amen. Look, and we that's one thing about us. One thing I love about us is we we talk about it. We don't leave a lot of room for guessing, yeah. right? We, we, we are in conversation with each other so much about everything that we know how to spark one another yeah like it's not a mystery so uh, I think communication and uh, knowing each other and doing all these things is uh, is how we keep the spark alive well family this has been amazing uh, this has been I've enjoyed this conversation we, we, we have to we have to do it more um, I, I cannot encourage you enough 
If you haven't pre-ordered Balance, pre-order Balance. Uh, there are all sorts of incentives. There are a whole bunch of uh, uh, teachings and various things coming your way. Um, pre-order, you can go to thebalancebook.com. It's going to bless you right now. Uh, in fact, I think today might even be the last day mm -hmm. because the call to Pioneer, um, it, which is our two-day intensive for leaders, entrepreneurs, is going to be powerful. If you pre-order Balance, then you get a live stream pass to the conference for free. It's a $90 value. People have paid $90 for this pass and it's gonna be interactive. You'll be able to chat online. There's gonna be Q and A, um, just all sorts of opportunities for you to be engaged. It's gonna be powerful, awesome. You get that for free simply by pre-ordering the book. You're gonna get it anyway because it's that type of book. It's gonna be everywhere. Uh, if you've already pre-ordered the book or if you've already, you're already attending the conference, you know, get it for somebody else. You know, it's, it's going to be one of those type of things. And again, you'll be plugged into the balanced community and you're going to be receiving all sorts of helpful things that help you to be balanced, to regain balance, to discover balance on the way up to the release. So pre-order it today. You can go to thebalancebook.com and get that. And uh, happy Valentine's Day. Oh, and one more thing. L.A., baby. Let's go Rams. Let's go. Go! But um, we love you. Um, we thank you so much for your partnership with One, with this movement. Uh, you've been an, an incredible uh, online community. You've been an incredible in-person community. We're praying right now. We're strategizing about uh, reintroducing in person. So that's, that's coming soon. That's in the works. We want to do it right and in the safest way possible. You'll hear more about that. But uh, we love you. We thank God for you. Thank you for your partnership.